Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, so thank you all for joining in, um, you know, to No CDs, uh, YouTube lives that we do um, every weeknight. Now, uh, my name is Kyle um, and this is Cassie. Hi, guys. Thanks for uh, tuning thank in. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, you can just throw all of your questions right in the comments there, and then me and Cassie will kind of hop around and really try to answer everything there. Um, but just a little bit of background. So um, I do have OCD myself as well as Cassie, and um, we're both peer advisors here at NoCD. And so we are here to support people in the beginning of the process so that they um, feel comfortable and ready to go into therapy. So that's just a little bit about what we do here. Um, and yeah, you know, ask away. So we can go ahead and, and start. Um, let's take a look. So hello, everyone's saying hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, Shatana. Hi, Tony. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> um, you too, Anthony. Hope you're having a good day. Hi, Haley. Okay, so I'm going to throw one up here. So this is from Bella. Okay, so every time I am driving, I get so much anxiety because I'm scared that the people in the car in front of me will think I'm driving angry when I'm not. And I think they will be mad at me. So, I mean, go ahead. What do you think with this? Yeah, well, I was gonna say, um, uh, let me see. Well, it's it's kind of seems like, I don't know, maybe like some, some checking, um, you know, if you're kind of like looking in front of you consistently as you drive, which sounds like a compulsion. So I'm not sure, Bella, if you are in therapy right now, but, oh, I did wanna say this too, me and Cassie are not licensed clinicians. Um, we are here just coming from our peer perspective. So we can't give advice on exposure techniques or anything like that. Um, but yeah, Bella, I'm sorry that you're going through this. It does sound like, it sounds like some, some guilt maybe there as well, which is mm -hmm. often associated with OCD. What do you think, Cassie? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, again, we're not clinicians, but I think mm -hmm. the biggest part about doing ERP is, uh, you know, being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, so I noticed at the very end, you're saying, I think they will be mad at me. Um, so, you know, ERP sitting with that uncomfortability is, you know, accepting that they might be mad at you or they might not be, but, you know, doing your part. Um, you know, you're not driving angrily and that's something that, you know, as much as we can't, we can't help what other people may or may not think when we're driving. So that's, that's a really good example of, you know, we got to live within that, that limbo of it's okay not to know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, cause OCD wants certainty and we can't really ever get certainty really in any areas of our lives more so. And with OCD, it just we search for that certainty when it really isn't there. Um, and that's when ERP comes in and, and helps us get back on the right track. Good luck, Bella. Cassie, I'll let you go ahead and choose one. <laughs> let me go through. Um, okay, this is a good one. I start treatment this week. What should I expect and how intense is the process? So first of all, congratulations on starting treatment. It is always, um, it is a hard but really great step to take. Um, so the thing that I would say, um, you know, a lot of us say ERP is intense, which it is. But in my opinion, suffering with OCD and trying constantly to ignore those thoughts is way worse. Um, so I would expect, you know, be ready to talk about your OCD. If you are going into treatment, they're going to ask you all about your OCD, what your intrusive thoughts are, um, you know, every aspect of it whatsoever. So, you know, be ready to open up. And I will say your OCD therapist is going to be the one person that's going to be the best to open up to who's going to understand. Um, so you know, as much as it's uncomfortable to talk about these things, know that this is probably the safest place to do so. Um, and, you know, ERP is not going to be fun. I will not sugarcoat that. But it is so important to practice every day. Practice it so much. I know Kyle has opened up on here and said that, you know, the biggest thing that helped him was every single day practicing. And that's so true. I was very hesitant in the beginning to practice my ERP because it wasn't fun. And it took me longer to um, get to that point where I was, I felt like I was in recovery. So it's a perfect example. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's great, Cassie. Because yeah, I say that a lot. Um, because you know, people ask like, oh, when when can I improve or when will I start seeing improvements? And it really all depends on practice. Because I, you know, it's like if I'm over here practicing every day, and then we have my friend over here practicing once a week. Well, our progress is going to be very, very different. Um, mm -hmm. so so yeah, you know, I think that. There's a lot of unknowns going into this therapy. So this is a really great question. Um, and essentially, I mean, it's like Cassie said too, it's intense going through OCD without therapy. Um, and so in therapy, it there are intense times, but the goal is, is that the intense times fade and subside. Um, because as you kind of get to that intense anxious level, the, what you're what we're trying to do and what you're trying to do is to, to relieve that anxiety. So instead of before therapy where you get all the anxiety and then it really doesn't go anywhere, it kind of just stays and you're always anxious. ERP, the goal is, is that you raise yourself to the anxious state and then you watch it fall down so that you kind of, you relax a little bit. So that's, that's the goal here. Um, but it's hard, you know, you're, you're facing those, those fears you could say, but you know, as Cassie said, and how I think about it is like we face those fears every day typically. Um, and so with, ERP, we get the techniques to be able to handle it. And so, all right, let's grab another one here. Um, how hard was it? So kind of the same thing Nicole asked here, just to kind of touch on that. So um, how hard was it um, to get through ERP? Um, sorry, next week, that's very exciting, Nicole. Um, good for you. I mean, that's step one. That's the biggest step right there is to get into therapy. So that's really awesome. Um, I mean, it was hard. Yeah. Like it, it was hard um, because I actually started seeing progress and then I like completely went downhill again. And so that that's hard. It's hard to start seeing yourself get better. And then all of a sudden go back downhill because right away I was like, okay, I'm never going to get better. This clue isn't going away. Like it's just always going to come back like super strong. And that was really hard. But what I had to realize was that that's a part of the process because we're trying to break this, this, like pattern that we've been in for a long time. So it makes sense that, oh, sometimes we might fall back into the old pattern and we keep moving forward and we might fall back a little bit. So it's the process of it. So I would just show yourself some compassion during those times and know that when you, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, you fall down nine times, you get back up 10. Um, so it's, you know, that's a good mentality to have. What do you think, Cassie? Yeah, I, exactly what you said, Kyle. I think that, you know, you ERP is something you definitely have to, you know, really push through. Um, and, and, you know, practice does make perfect. The more you practice it, the easier it is going to get. It's so hard in the beginning, but it's going to get easier to do. Um, and I think just keep reminding yourself as you're going through it, you know, this is hard, but it's going to, it's work that's going to help you get better with your OCD. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, that honestly, that's going to be the biggest thing is just continue practicing and and rolling through with it. But, you know, I, I've noticed, too, for myself and other people, um, as you're going through, the hardest part, too, is also getting that motivation to do ERP. Um, so that's why it's so important to continue, you know, know what you're doing this for. Know what picture what recovery is going to look like for you, what life is going to be like for you without OCD. And whenever you're having those times when it's, you know, a little bit harder, continue reminding yourself of what that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's okay to feel like it's hard. It's okay to be, you know, upset once in a while. It's okay to be anxious. It's okay to judge the process even. It, it really is. And it's kind of allowing yourself to feel those certain things and know that it's okay, that that's, that's all a part of the process. So, um, but good luck, Nicole. That's so, so exciting. Um, so a lot of ERP questions here, which I think they're all great because I think they're really great just for everyone here to see. Um, so how does ERP work? Um, so Cassie, do you want to maybe start with this? Sure. Yeah. So ERP is, is for anyone who doesn't know, it's called um, exposure and response prevention. And it is, the main form of therapy that we use at NoCD because it is considered the gold standard of treatment. So whenever you're doing ERP, it's almost like you're, do you, do you hear that on your end? Okay. I'm hearing something. Never mind. Um, <laughs> whenever you're doing ERP, you are slowly exposing yourself to things that would trigger your OCD. And instead of doing 
I guess, whatever normally you would do, like a compulsion, whether it's reassurance seeking, checking, um, if you have physical or mental compulsions, whatever that is that, that you do whenever your OCD flares up. Um, you're learning to move forward without having to do that compulsion and sitting with that, ang that feeling, whether it's anxiety, it's uncertainty, whatever it is. And the goal behind this, because when we think about OCD, we have you know, we have our obsessive thought, our intrusive thought, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, that causes us anxiety. It causes that uncomfortable feeling. We do a compulsion and then we feel good for a short period of time. And then it just keeps cycling back through. ERP works by intercepting after we have that intrusive thought and that anxiety. It stops it right there and says, we're going to sit with this. We're going to sit with this feeling until it goes away. And in a sense, you learn how to not really rely on doing that compulsion anymore. And you know that you can make it through on the other end. So in that sense, you learn that you don't need to do these compulsions. And whenever these intrusive thoughts do come around again, they're not so scary. And because of that, they start coming around less and less often. Um, because you know you can get through it without the compulsions. And you've shown yourself that you can. So that's really what ERP is all about. It's it's scary because we have to expose ourselves to things that trigger us, but we're also getting through it without compulsions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, like you said, it's just a, with the compulsions, it's just a repetitive cycle. So, um, so when you resist those, you're trying to break that cycle is what you're doing, um, which you can imagine can be hard because I mean, some people, I mean, we, you know, I was in that mindset for a whole year. And so it became natural for me. And so when I started to try and do exposures, you know, it feels unnatural. It feels like, oh my gosh, you know, what are you doing? Like you have to do that compulsion, but it's like, no, I don't. I just need to learn that I don't need to. Um, so that's essentially what ERP is teaching you is that we don't need those compulsions to be okay. Essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to grab a question, Cassie? There's Quite a few now. <laughs> sure. Oh my God, there is. No. <laughs> okay. I love it, guys. Keep asking questions. Oh, no. Great, great questions. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. Um, Ellie says, I have existential OCD and I'm still working on finding treatment. Um, you should definitely come to us if you can. Um, how can I hold on to hope that I won't suffer with this forever? Tips on practicing patience and self-compassion. Mm -hmm. Very hard to do, especially with OCD. We are constantly blaming ourselves, putting blame on ourselves, you know, yeah. worse, always how we are. Mm -hmm. um, I will say something that helped me was whenever I started getting into treatment and I started resisting compulsions and working through those those. OCD moments that we have, um, you know, even if nine times out of 10, I still had a, did a compulsion or I was still listening to my OCD, that one time that I resisted it gave me hope that I was going to get better. And if you think about it, you know, you have to be hopeful because those other nine times I was like, man, I'm never going to beat this. This is terrible. But when, I, but when you hit that one time, you have to tell yourself, I did this once, I can do it again. And keep practicing at it and practicing at it and tell yourself, it's okay that it's not perfect now, but that doesn't mean that it's never going to be. Um, and you know, it's honestly just like ERP. Even if you don't believe it, keep telling yourself that. Keep reminding yourself what you're doing this for and you know how your life is gonna look like without OCD and practice at it, just like you would with ERP. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. I, so Ellie, I have existential OCD and, you know, just to give you some assurance, not reassurance, um, I was able to overcome. I, I mean, exposures really just helped me a lot. Um, and even, I mean, there were times when I was like, this is not going to work, but I still had to make that decision to keep doing it. Um, and I mean, it just, it really changed everything for me. So I just hope that gives you some hope because I mean, I was in, I, the darkest place in my life and I was able to to get out of that with ERP and it was a lot of work and yes a lot of patience because there's bumps in the road um what we like to say is it's not linear so you know we're kind of moving through this process like up down up down but hopefully kind of always moving up um but it there is a lot of patience there because 
you're you're breaking a cycle and it's it's hard it's you know it's think about any pattern or any cycle that you're in you know it's hard to just cut like cold turkey something you know even thinking about like addiction for instance like just in the way that i mean it's tough to just you're stuck in a pattern and then just to try to break that completely so it's going to take a little bit of time um but i think for me it's like acknowledging that that's okay it's okay that it's going to take time and it's okay that there are going to be bumps in the road because that is a part of the process i mean i know it was for me I talk to a lot of people where, you know, maybe one week they're feeling good and the next week in the ERP, they're not feeling so good. And then the next week they're feeling even better than two weeks before. So it's just kind of like a process like that. But the goal is to get to a place where it's not a constant war zone. Maybe there's some little fights here and there, but not a war zone. Um, Self-compassion mm -hmm. is like my biggest thing because I'm like my biggest critic, which I, I, I think a lot of us are, but yeah, you know, and it's, what I like try to remind myself of is it's okay for you to feel your feelings. Like if you're upset, it's okay to be upset. You don't have to run away from that and be like, why am I upset or why am I anxious or why am I or all this? It's like, it's okay that, you know, if you're having a rough day, that's okay. Like give yourself that, um, that leeway to feel all of your emotions, not only the good ones, because if we run from the bad ones, it's just feeding it really kind of just like an intrusive thought. Um, so I give myself pep talks a lot. Like that's something I do now, um, because it's really helped me. Cause I realized that I wasn't talking the best to myself. Um, you know, say I did a compulsion. I'm like, Kyle, you're so dumb. Like, why'd you do that? Like, you know, better, like you just did that for 10 minutes. Like, how could you? Whereas now it's like, you know what? I caught myself doing a compulsion. So I'm going to stop it. Like, this is my opportunity to stop this. And then I can just move on with my day. But if I like get mad at myself, well, now I'm going to be in like a mood all day. But if I'm like, oh, you know what, Kyle, you caught it in five minutes. Good for you. Okay, moving on. Um, so it's just showing yourself that it's okay because um, we all slip up. Like we can fall into compulsion sometimes and we might not notice it. But the, the important thing is, is when we do notice it, what do we do at that point? You know, it's like, do we talk down to ourselves and then just like, you know, end the day? Or do we just tell ourselves like it's okay and then kind of like let that pass? So self-compassion is hard. And that was like a big thing that I've worked on. So um, Ellie, yeah, just try to give yourself like some little pep talks here and there. Um, like I literally physically will like, just like kind of talk to myself in my head, um, but it helps, so. Yes, I see a good question. Go for it. <laughs> what if your OCD is rational though? Wouldn't ERP be hard? I have contamination OCD. So, First thing I want to say right off the bat, everyone with OCD thinks their OCD thoughts are rational. It's, I mean, would you agree, Kyle? Um, yeah, it, it well, yeah, it's, it's at tough, one point in time. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, we've all thought our thoughts were rational. And especially if you have contamination OCD, I can especially understand why um, in this current time you would have, be struggling with that because you know, we went from a point where our intrusive thoughts were like, oh, that's excessive to now it's like, oh, the government's telling you that these are standards that you should be doing. Mm -hmm. So it is hard, but I would say that even though it's rational, doesn't mean you should always listen to it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So there's, yeah, because there's, when it comes to OCD, there's a line because when the government is, you know, telling you this and telling you that, and you're following those guidelines, like that's, that is what it is. But if, you know, you're spending 12 hours a day cleaning and doing this and doing that, well, that's dipping into the realm of unhealthy OCD, um, you know, just kind of like a wormhole of, of all of that, those thoughts and compulsions. Um, so I, I know what you're saying though, it's, it's tough in this type of thing. Cause it's like, well, yeah, th some of this is rational and some of it, very well is but there's a point though where it crosses that line and it's not so rational um mm -hmm. that's where sometimes you do need a specialist to help you like identify you know like okay yes it makes sense for me to bring my groceries home and wipe them down once you know but if we're wiping them down 30 times and then we end up not using something because we think it's contaminated that kind of takes it to a whole nother level so mm -hmm. ocd it really depends on like how much time you're spending on it the pattern, um, cause that's different than just following like, um, official guidelines or something, but it's, that's a tough one, Rebecca, for sure. We actually, I, 
hear that a lot of just like, well, where's the line? And it's like, that's hard to identify. So mm -hmm. hard for a lot of people, Rebecca. So I'm sure you're doing your best with that for sure. Um, but ERP, would it be hard? Um, well, ERP is going to be hard no matter what. Um, so I don't think that to me, like, I don't think that it would change that in any way. Um, do you, what do you think, Cassie? Yeah, I think that, you know, the thing that you brought, the, the factor that you brought in with time is very important um, because, you know, this person is saying contamination OCD, maybe, you know, washing your hands is rational. That's correct. But doing it to a point where you're spending five hours a day washing your hands might not be rational anymore. That's the point where the OCD is coming in. Um, so ERP would look at it like, okay, we have to now limit the amount and bring it back down to a normal amount of time, a rational amount of time. Um, so it's all about, even if what your OCD is telling you to do is normal, if it's at an abnormal rate, that's when the ERP would come through and say, you know, we're going to find where the obsession is with this and limit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great. I'm going to throw one up here from Matt. Um, so as you continue through ERP, how do you monitor progress outside of practice? That's like a really good question. Um, so for me, how do I monitor progress outside of practice? Well, I, I kind of look at my days. Um, so it's like, you know, I mean, sometimes I might look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't even think I had one intrusive thought today, but I didn't think about it. It's just something that came to my mind later on. Um, but to me in that moment, I'm like, wow, you know, like that's progress. Like, I don't even think I, you know, or like for me, I have harm OCD. So, you know, knives used to be super triggering. Well, maybe I like, I don't know, was by like some giant knife and I didn't even think twice. And then later on, I'm like, oh my gosh, like that didn't even really phase me that much. So it's kind of like, I, I guess I being triggered is kind of how I monitor stuff too, of when I go through my every day, yeah, I might be triggered, but to what extent and how often? That's kind mm -hmm. of a way for me to monitor my progress. What do, what do you think, Cassie? Yeah, I think similar to what you said, I noticed that whenever my OCD was at its worst, I was either in the state where I was ruminating on stuff and obsessing on, over stuff or I felt really good, like almost like this high that we think about whenever our OCD is not bothering us for the first time ever. Um, and I was riding that high, but then I was also just on edge so bad, like what's going to trigger me next? So, you know, I think that that I was monitoring my progress because I was noticing that I was more and more just living with this normal state where I wasn't really triggered but i wasn't on edge waiting for something i was just like mm -hmm. okay this is normal <laughs> yeah yeah i think this is a tough question matt because it's kind of like i it's kind of like recovery how everyone looks at recovery differently um like recovery looks different for everyone um whether that's like oh i don't have any intr intrusive thoughts i have you no know, reactions to the intrusive thoughts whatever the case is um but yeah and something actually also to mention is when it comes to doing erp therapy I think we typically have goals. Like we're usually like, you know, OC has taken away my social life. OCD has caused me to be like a bad student. OCD, you know, makes me unfocused from my relationships. So certain things like that. So another gauge could be, are those are those things changing? Are they improving? Even if it's slightly, like, you know, you, you used to never be able to go out with your friends on the weekend. Well, oh, you went out last weekend and it wasn't so bad. So. It, you know, you're, you know, you're trying to inch through those goals, which I know I went to ERP because I just wanted to be a better version of myself for my family and my friends and, you know, wanted to be able to get back out there. So when I started to see some of that, even if it wasn't, you know, hundred percent, I was like, okay, I'm, I am making progress because I couldn't do that before. And I just did it. I, yes, I wasn't like, you know, in the best place the whole time, but I couldn't even do it before. And now I did it. So there's a lot of different ways, Matt, but yeah, I think, yeah, you know, keep your watch on it and, and you'll find things that you can gauge for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so we have Mario here. I just want to say, hi, Mario. It's so good to see you. I know I um, it's been a couple weeks, so it's really great to see you. I hope you're doing well over there. Mario's been tuning in for a long time, so. Oh, I love it. Say hi, I know. 
Mm. Let's think. Okay, do you see one you want to do? Um, oh, I see a good one, actually. Yes. I was going to click on that one, too. Really? <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay, so Amanda, um, is it common for themes to switch quickly? I had a recent trigger related to a theme of mine, and now the old themes seem less severe. Now I'm worried they were never OC, so I'm trying to sit with that. Well, good for you for trying to sit with that. That's awesome. Um, Cassie, do you want to wanna tackle this one? Yeah, so I definitely think it's common for themes to switch around. And, you know, how fast they do, I think, is different for each person. Um, yeah, I think and I think that's something that's scary, too, as you're going through treatment, because it's like, you know, we think, oh, my gosh, I got past this one theme, but now this other theme is coming up. I'm never going to get better. And that's the nice thing about ERP is that even though we have different themes coming up and they seem scary, it all of our OCD follows the same pattern, that same cycle I talked about earlier. So it's, you know, it's no matter what the theme is, no matter what your OCD is latching onto, the more you practice at re getting rid of that cycle, not relying on compulsions or reassurance seeking or checking, you're still making progress that your OCD is probably just latching on to whatever it can find um, at that point. But it's important to just continue trying to, whatever that theme is, just keep working at it. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think whatever theme is like most present is, you know, what to work on. But, I, you know, of course, like you want to follow your direction from your therapist and make sure that, you know, you are going along, you know, if you are with a therapist, but yes, I mean, my themes, they, when I was like in going through it, I mean, it was like one day it was this next day it was that, oh, then we're back to that. And then, oh, I don't even think about that for like two weeks. And then it's back full force. So, and I just had to like, kind of follow that. Like every time that would happen, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do an exposure for that. Like, you know, it's like, I, it's kind of like, oh yeah, you think, you know, oh, so you think you can like, you know, spin me no i'm gonna just do an exposure for that and then oh that's bothering me now like i'm gonna do it for that and so what can happen is you kind of start tackling all these different things and then maybe it'll come to a point where ocd is like oh shoot <laughs> like you know like she's overcome this all and doesn't care you know and it's just so there's not as many triggers and not as many intrusive thoughts so that's the um that's the goal there but i just want to say i mean good for you for trying to sit with that because yes, that's, that's uncertainty. And you are, you know, what you're doing right now is, is healthy, healthy way of looking at it is what it sounds like. So good luck, Amanda. We're here awesome. for you. Awesome. Um, do you want to do the one right below it? Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> okay. Can I throw it up? I can throw it up. Um, okay. Lena's laying on my one arm, so. <laughs> so uh, oh yeah. So, okay. So Jacob, Hey, how do you handle your anxiety? when wants when it when it wants to make you comfortable okay wait sorry how do you handle your anxiety when it wants to make you comfortable and not doing anything out of your comfort zone it's like it challenges my intentions and goals so i don't do anything yeah i mean so you're saying you can't go out of your comfort zone is that what you're getting from this I was gonna say, I think it's either that or saying that your therapist is, um, wants you to go outside your comfort zone. I, th I think it's your anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can look at it both ways. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're doing, if you're doing ERP and going outside of your comfort zone is what makes you anxious, um, you know, that really is the goal of it. Yeah. is to push yourself you know it's not comfortable to do things like erp but it's it's what's going to help in the long run is continue pushing yourself just a little bit further each time um but as far as you know your anxiety keeping you in this comfort zone bubble it's kind of the same way because if you think about it if somebody for example has social anxiety and they listen to that social anxiety forever they're never going to be able to go out and and have friends and do things. So, you know, your idea of challenging it, yes, you might not go jump into a concert like mosh pit or whatever it is, but doing things like I'm going to, you know, 
I'm not going to say no to this group of friends tonight. I'm going to try to go. And if I need to go home halfway through, I can go home. Um, so it's, you know, the fact that it's challenging your intentions and goals, it could be like that inner voice of your OCD saying, you can't do this. You don't want to do this. And it's normal for us to think, you know, maybe I don't. But the more you fight that voice, the quieter it eventually gets. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because, um, yeah, the, the idea is to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's that's just what we like to say. And it's it's hard. But but yeah, like Cassie said, it's like pushing yourself a little bit more. Um, and, you know, we don't want to overwhelm ourselves. So, you know, yeah, you don't want to jump into a concert. But it's kind of like, you know, if that is, you know, just for instance, like, you know, just a metaphor for that. It's like, you know, you got to kind of like take steps. Um, so it's, you know, I think oftentimes I know for myself, I might set high expectations where it's like, but so I set high expectations and when I don't meet that, I feel like a failure, but it's solely because I literally set myself up to fail. And so it's kind of like, but so what happens then when I do fail, I'm like, okay, Kyle, you suck. Like you couldn't do that. Like, oh my gosh. But it's like, I could have never done that. Cause it was just way, it was way too much. But so I would say like, set some, set some small goals for yourself. Um, like some really small ones and see how you do with that because maybe you're setting really high goals that are just a little too intimidating. Um, so maybe try some small ones. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I think I want to grab the, um, the one beneath it. Okay. So <laughs> let's do, can you explain checking OCD? I really want to grab this because that is something that I definitely struggle with. Mm. Um, so checking OCD can, it literally is what it sounds like that, you obsess over checking things. What those things are is very different, I've noticed all across the board. Um, I notice that some people, whenever they have a checking OC, a checking um, obsession, that they might do things like check the locks before they go to sleep or check that the stove is turned off, check that the oven's off. Um, they might, you know, if somebody has harm OCD also, they might check and make sure that they didn't, so like if they're driving, they didn't run over something or they didn't hurt somebody. Usually there's an underlying thing with it. Um, but I know like even for myself, you know, being in your 20s, using a lot of social media, if I post anything, I go and check it like five times to make sure that I didn't make a spelling mistake. I didn't, you know, upload something wrong. I didn't mess up which picture I wanted to post or if it came out blurry and I waited too long to fix it. Like all, all these thoughts are checking things that I do personally, but it's, it's like, you know, you typically notice when you have checking OCD is that things that you do, you feel like you can't walk away from, you have to continue checking them until it either feels right. Um, you feel like you've satisfied your compulsion enough or you get exhausted of it and just just defeated is usually the two ways that it goes. And, you know, oftentimes with us feeling like we've checked it enough times, it's gotten to a point where it's too much or, you know, we've spent so many, like so long doing it and whoever we're around, maybe we've incorporated them in, into also helping us check, which is also really hard on the people around us. So you know, overcoming that is in a, a way of overcoming this is being able to check things less, have faith in yourself that you did something right the first time and accepting the uncertainty that we might not know if if we checked it 100 percent or not or if it's mm -hmm. if it's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You said it, Cassie. I don't yeah, I don't have a lot of checking, um, but like you said, too, it's it can be I yes, it can be a part of any type of um any theme and because oftentimes, yeah, it's it, checking is like, can be like a compulsion overall. So it can really span across for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So I see a really great question from Monica and actually um, Brittany actually answered it, but I just, I think it's really great to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. So Monica wrote, what is the difference between those of us who are having intrusive harm thoughts and suicide thoughts and the people who actually act on those thoughts? So, what Brittany replied underneath, she said, ego dystonic versus ego systemic. So yes, so that's correct. Um, 
So when it comes to this ego dystonic, so that's what OCD is. OCD is ego dystonic. So what that means is that all of these intrusive thoughts and feelings do not align with like how you truly feel or what you truly believe. And so that mm-hmm. is, so it's like colliding, it's like a battle. And so that's where all the distress comes from and all the un- uncomfortability and like just the high anxiety, panic, like it's because they don't match their ego dystonic. So now ego systonic, it's, that's like the opposite. So that's like, you know, you get a thought or feeling and that's something that you want to do. So there's not, there's not really distress there because mm-hmm. they, they match. Um, and so that would be the difference between those two and OCD is ego dystonic. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And if you even want to think about a basic example, you know, obviously if somebody has harm thoughts, this might be triggering, but if you think about it, you know, people that have harm thoughts and they're afraid of hurting people might do things like hide knives, but somebody who actually does want to hurt people probably has a lot knives galore. They have so many because that's what their intention is. Um, So even, yeah, exactly like Kyle said, you know, this is, it goes against your morals, who you are, what you want to do um, versus, you know, people who actually do feel that way. Mm-hmm. And and we kind of, in a way, we recognize it. Even if our OCD is telling us we aren't, we kind of are because we get uncomfortable. We don't like it. We're, we panic at the thought of even having these thoughts. And, you know, that feeling is like distressing. And it's not because we enjoy it. It's because we don't like it. We don't want to be having these thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was a great question for sure. Um, this is a really great one from Josh as well. So how do you practice exposures in the middle of a busy work day? Yeah, I mean, that's, it's hard. Um, and so something that actually like my, my therapist taught me, um, and I would just, you know, of course, if you are seeing a therapist, just like, you know, get proper direction from your therapist. But this is just something that she directed me. She was like, you know, if you are like, cause yes, we're, we're all off lives. Like we're, we're working, you know, we, we, we're doing things. And so she said that if, yeah, I'm in the middle of my work day and you know, those intrusive thoughts hit and I like, you know, should, or, or wish I could do an ERP. What she told me is, you know, to acknowledge it. So say those thoughts come into my head, I'm immediately distressed. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like I wish I could just like step away from work and like do an ERP, but like I can't. Um, so what she told me to tell, like to do is to be like, okay, you know, Kyle, um, you're having these intrusive thoughts, like you definitely need to do an ERP, but you can't do it now. So we're going to do it after work. And so it's like giving, like, she just said, like, give yourself like that talk because, and it actually helped because I, like, I'm, I'm acknowledging that it's there. I'm acknowledging that I want to work on it, but I'm also acknowledging that I can't right now. And so me saying like, yes, okay, I'm going to do an exposure like right after work and like, you know, whatever. Um, and it's kind of putting a plan in place. So for me, that does give me some relief. Even if I'm still anxious from those thoughts, I still have a plan in place versus just like, oh no, I can't do an exposure right now. Like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, kind of go down that, that same rabbit hole. It's just keeping it really, really kind of simple in that way of like, well, I can't do it now, but I, you know what, I'm going to do it later. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when later comes, you might've forgot it, it, it could pass. And so it's like, it's kind of an interesting technique to kind of it's like putting on a hold, like, okay, I'm going to do that. But like, I just, I'm just putting on a hold. Um, so that's kind of something that I do. What about you, Cassie? Anything else? Yeah. I think that, um, you know, first of all there, I know that if I really, really want to do an exposure and I am in a place where maybe I don't want to hear people to hear me saying things or doing things, I will, I know sometimes I would record like create a voice recording and listen to it of like my intrusive thoughts or whatever it is. Um, But along the lines of what you said, if you're truly not prepared and you cannot do an exposure, um, something that I still struggle with and I have to practice all the time um, is, you know, sitting with that uncomfortability and not doing like mental ruminations or like just like rolling it through your head over and over and over again. Because even if I'm not doing a compulsion, that's something that I still struggle with. I will sit and ruminate and like mentally, like, like mentally check, like, is that right? Is that not right? Even though I'm not physically doing anything, I'm sitting and just like rolling it over and over and over again in my head. So if 
you're at that point where you feel like you can't do a compulsion, but you know, you're still stuck in that OCD limbo, I guess. Practice sitting with that feeling. Don't think about it. Don't try to understand what it means. Don't try to reason with your OCD or like bargain with your thoughts. Just yeah. say, okay, I'm thinking about this. I'm I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna really put any meaning onto it. This happened to me the other day when I was in the grocery store and I was like frozen. I was like, oh my God, this thought just came into my mind. And I was so triggered and I was like, nope, I'm just gonna sit here. I'm gonna stare forward. And it, and it went away so fast and I was so shocked um, because it was a really hard, a really hard um, theme that I was struggling with. So to have it go away so fast and not bother me and not really come back for a while either, now that I think about it, um, it, was, it was really cool because it was just kind of like, okay, I let that pass. I didn't sit and think about it. Um, so, you know, if you feel like you can't do anything about it, sometimes doing nothing is is just as helpful. So, you know, give yourself credit where it's due. Even if you feel like you can't do anything, you know, anything that you feel like is going to be progress that you're saying no to your OCD is still going to be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. First of all, Cassie, nice job with that. I am sure that was hard, but you approached it well, you know, like you, you made that decision right there where you could have been like, no, I need, I need to leave, you know? Um, but you stuck with that and that's awesome. So good for you. Yeah. I literally was like just staring at the thing that was triggering me. And I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you just let it ride. And that's like, yeah. and that's exactly. And, and that's kind of, I mean, that's pretty much exposure is, you know, sh Cassie decided to just stare at it instead of running away from it. And it sounds like you didn't do compulsions is what it sounded like. You kind of kept your focus on it um, and then it passed. And then like you said too, you're like, oh yeah, I haven't even really thought about that since. And it's just, that's kind of the hope with, with this is that slowly those triggers, like you might be triggered in a, in a moment, but then maybe in 30 seconds, you're like moving on. And so it's kind of like a cool thing because there can be some anxiety there, but we also have the ability to like quickly shut that down. Um, mm -hmm. And then when we do, and we truly don't react, the thought doesn't have power anymore. So it was in and then it's out. And that's, that's yeah. awesome. I love that. I kind of like to think about it like an ocean wave. Like I'm just going to let this pass. I'm not going to try to hold on to it. It's water. I'm going to let it pass. It's just going. I love that. <laughs> I really, really love that. Um, here is a great question from uh, Kyla. So what does feeling OCD free feel like? How did you get there? Does your OCD come back? And for me, my OCD theme changes often. Is that normal? So, I want to know what OCD free <laughs> feels like. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so that's the thing. So Kyla, um, well, it's, it's, it's different. So recovery is different for everyone um, in the way that they, they see it, in the way that they think they're recovered or they're you know, feeling good or, or whatever the case is. Um, and I guess for your last question, yes, very, very normal for those changes to change or those themes to change often. I mean, mine was like daily. I feel like when I was going through it and sometimes I'm like, Oh my God, thank God it moved away from that one. And then like, it, you know, cause some were worse than others for me. Um, but so what does feeling OC free feel like? Well, I, I don't know because I, I'm not OCD free. Um, I, and what I'll say is that like they're, you know, not to like, you know, be negative or anything, but there's not a cure for OCD per se, at least right now. Um, so it's not about curing or like completely ridding. So essentially it's about ridding, not so much ridding those intrusive thoughts as much as we don't want to ever think those again, but it's about being free of the compulsions because the compulsions are what tie us down and burden us and give us the anxiety and the distress. So for me, like recovery, um, so does your OC come back? Well, I don't think, to me, it's just kind of, I don't know. It's like, it's just like something that pops in once in a while and I don't really, I don't put too much um, emphasis on it. It's just something that, um, and this is kind of how I like to describe it. So like, Cassie, you said like yours is like an ocean wave or whatnot, like water. Mine's like a leaf. 
So like, cause I like to think of it as like, you know, I'm standing outside and a, so say you're outside a leaf, you know, a leaf blows by you. You see it, you saw the leaf. It was like physically there. Well, then it blows away and it's gone. But like, do you catch yourself like thinking about the leaf after it left? No, it's just like out of the picture and you're just like moving on with your day. So that's mostly, I would say like 90% of the time is how those thoughts are for me. Um, the intrusive thought flows in like the leaf. I see it. I acknowledge it and then it flows out and I don't think about it again or I try really hard not to. <laughs> um, you know, it's just like, you know, sometimes you have to resist compulsions a little bit harder. Sometimes I, you might have to be like, okay, I got to do a real exposure because this one's still bothering me. But other times I'm, the leaf is gone. The leaf is gone. And kind of like the situation with Cassie where she was triggered, but she just worked through it. And then she didn't even think about it the rest of her shopping. And she was able to just kind of like keep shopping and move on because she let it blow away and she no longer put that reaction into it. So that's how my life is now is it's like that. And those intrusive thoughts do come less because I have worked really hard on them. And so they just come less to me. Um, how would you say your, your, like your recovery or how you are now, Cassie? Yeah, I, I would definitely not say I'm OCD free, but my relationship with my OCD is 10 hundred times different, like yeah. so different. Um, you know, I, there was a point where I was like, you know, I was in such a bad mental state and, you know, I was not working at the time. I was like, I don't know how I'm ever going to work again. I don't know how I'm going to go about my daily life or leave my bedroom ever again. Like it was just, it was terrible. And now I work a job where I talk about my OCD and OCD in general every single day. And it doesn't trigger me. It's, you know, there was a point where I couldn't even tell my immediate family that I had OCD or talk to the person I was dating about my OCD. And now, like, I will tell complete strangers about it. Mm -hmm. I I will sit in a bar and if somebody is talking about them being so OCD, <laughs> I'll be like, stop it. That's not what OCD is. Like, it happened the other day. And it's like, I would have been so upset and just held it inside uh, like whenever I was at my worst. So, you know, it's not to say that your OCD is going to go away forever, but you have such a better relationship with your mental health, including your OCD. So even if you're not OCD free, it feels like you're free and just yes. your OCD is there. Yes. The heaviness is gone. I mean, not, you know, not always, but the, it's just that, you know, it, it lightens up and, and kind of, like I said earlier, I always call it like, like when you're in the midst of it, it's like a war zone. And then you get to, you know, you have the opportunity with ERP to get out of the war zone. And yeah, there's going to be some fights here and there, but that's, that's life. That's just the way it is. We got to fight sometimes. Um, and so I do fight once in a while, but it's just not a constant war zone. And I'm not always like, when's the next fight? where I used to be before of like really worried about when is it going to go down the hill again? When's it going to get worse? Whatever the case is, but yeah, it's uncertainty. So, you know, and, and then you asked, how did you get there? Well, practice lots and lots and lots of practice with ERP as you know, Cassie even mentioned, it's just so important. Um, and that's what I believe brought me to this level of where these thoughts are like leaves to me mostly, um, you know, where they just blow by and I don't, I don't have to think too much about it. So you know, Kyla, that's, that's the goal here is to kind of get to that level where yes, you're not OCD free, but it's about being free of compulsion because compulsions are what are like really like ruining us essentially. They're ruining us and they're fueling the OCD. So once we can resist those compulsions, life is very, very different. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a question that I saw, and I think I keep seeing um, some questions about it too, or some oh, just comments. Oh, okay, cool. I found it. The fear of depression. I don't know what theme this, I guess it would kind of fall, um, I guess it would fall kind of under health, OC or something. I know because it's not so much depression always, but it's some kind of chronic like, I know Carl that I would used to do the lives with. Um, he had a fear of developing schizophrenia. I know personally for me, I think a fear of mine is dementia. 
And for Brittany, it might be depression. So I think it's more common than you think, even if there's not a quote unquote theme for it. Um, it's this, you know, lack of control that we're afraid of, of something chronic that we can't help. Um, and, you know, mine, I've, I've talked about this before on mine is I would, and I still struggle with it sometimes, is like constantly taking pictures of things because I'm afraid I'll forget in moments or, you know, whatever it may be, writing things down, like in my notes on my phone, just to an insane amount. And it's getting to the point where we have to accept that, yeah, I might not remember this specific thing. I might not remember how the light looks coming through my window on this specific day or what I wore on June 2nd, 2010 or whatever it may be. Like, I don't know. Um, but I can live with that. And it's so hard sometimes, but I need, I tell myself I can live with that, that I might not remember this. Um, and it's a similar thing, you know, I know he, Carl would do things like um, have, um, shoot, oh my gosh, if he's watching this, he's gonna make fun of me so bad. Um, I, on his Alexa, he would have like really low songs or voices playing. So, you know, just to make him think that maybe he is developing schizophrenia. And it's like getting to that point where I'm comfortable with the fact that this may happen, but I, I can, you know, I will tackle it then. I can get through it. I will go through the proper avenues to get care and not trying to do so many compulsions to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes. And yeah, and yeah, Brittany, like she said, it's like it could really fall under a multitude of themes, really, because I also have the fear of schizophrenia, actually. But for me, that kind of ties into like my harm OCD as well as my existential, just because I have the fear of losing my mind and then hurting someone or losing mm -hmm. my mind and not knowing. So it's, it can really be tied into anything just because OCD is just so tricky <laughs> and it just will really just kind of like piece all these things together that don't make any sense at all. Um, mm -hmm. But, but yes, I, I know that I, yes, there are a lot of people who are just, yeah, the fear of depression, the fear of being anxious forever, the fear of um, just all of those different feelings and mental states for sure. So, um, but good luck, Brittany. I, you know, I think that it, that's the thing though with ERP is exposures can be created for any of these fears. So that's like, you know, it's the blessing. It really is because it's like anything that we're scared of, we can overcome using some type of exposure. Um, like it's just possible to do that. So it's nice to kind of know, you know, whatever comes my way, I know how to do an exposure, you know, cause I've done exposures. I've, I've learned how to create them myself. I've learned how to, get to that core fear because here at no cd really our goal is to help you become your own therapist essentially um because it's you know it's cliche but like riding a bike you know how to ride a bike well you learn erp you learn the techniques and the tools that's not something that you forget like you know that and even then time say you know i i was severely triggered like last month for the first time in a long time and i knew what i had to do I didn't want to do it. <laughs> it had been a long time that I had done like a very severe harm exposure. And I, you know, immediately as all it has, what am I going to do? And it's like, well, I actually know what I, <laughs> what I need to do, you know, but it's like, you get in like the, that mode of like, Oh no. Cause it's been long, but it's like, well, I do know what to do. I've done this a million times. It's just been a long time, but I still know how to do it. I'm just scared to do it now. Cause it's been a while. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it's like, we always know, especially when we learn ERP. So that's just something that we have to tell ourselves in those times of distress is that, you know, I got to pull out those tools. It's been a minute, but like, let me dust them off and put them to some use. Um, and it's, it's tough. So, but yeah, good okay. luck. And I see you like just talking to a lot of people in the comments and just, that's really awesome. So thank you for just your support there. Yeah. Sense of community is so important. So yeah. Anyone who's watching this, if you've never talked to somebody with OCD, you are not alone. Um, you know, welcome into this chat to talk. O um, no CD has support groups now that are completely free. So if anyone on here has not in treatment yet or has not started, doesn't know where to begin, um, go to a support group. And even if you don't feel like sharing anything, you can just sit and observe. It's wild to look at how many people have the same crazy thoughts that we do. You're not alone and there's nothing wrong with you. It is just our OCD. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're exactly right. And yeah, those support groups are great. Um, they have different topics daily that you can choose from and, and like sign up for. So it's really cool because you can kind of take a look through and just be like, oh, that one, you know, is really related to me and mm -hmm. sign up for that. They're free. Um, so yeah. And also if you're not on our app, like, you know, definitely download that because there's just a lot of, a lot of cool tools there. So. Download it. Yes. Download the app. Um, me and Cassie are advocates as well. So we're on the app at times and um yeah, so it's it's a really cool place and especially like Cassie said, that community feel. It's so important with in the O C D world because I can say for myself, I felt extremely alone. Everyone I talk to feels they're the only ones going through what they're going through. Even I, you know, it's like I have harm OCD and they have harm OCD, but like well, they've never thought like this one specific thought and that just like changes everything and like it doesn't mm -hmm. You know, like it just doesn't and but we think it does and we think it makes us special and different and, you know, but it all ties back to the same thing. So at the end of the day, like we truly are all in this together. Um, even it feels like we're, when we're not, we, we are. And, and so like to be here and be able to all talk about it and, you know, it's mm -hmm. it, I know it helps me. I mean, it really does. And, you know, um, talking to people every day and not being as triggered as I thought I would be just because it's exposures. <laughs> like me and Cassie mm -hmm. kind of, you know, expose ourselves every day. And that's why it's great to do stuff like this and talk to other people because it just, it kind of maintains, I, I think it maintains my progress at least as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for people that think that, you know, their OCD is special in some sort of way, I've I've kind of experienced on both sides. Um, so there was a point in time where I thought that my OCD was not like right. I didn't have the right type of OCD. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time I opened up on the app about like, um, about um, needing to post or share the right photo. And if not, people were going to judge me or, or I made this wrong choice that I can't take back. And it's, and it's so insignificant, but I don't know why I can't let it go. And, it, I was like, nobody else experiences this. So like, I can't relate to anybody, even though it feels like such a mistake in my head over something so insignificant. And I remember one day being like, I wonder, and I shared it on the app. And I actually met somebody who is a photographer who had to give up photography because they would give people photos of events, whatever it is, and they'd be afraid that they didn't print the right one or use the right photo from this shoot or whatever it may be. And they can't limit what they send to people for what they think is right. Mm -hmm. So, it, and it was for them, it was also like, I've never talked to somebody who also had this. Um, and on the, on the flip side, I went to a group, uh, one of the support groups on the app, um, which for people looking for the app, if you go into the app store and type in no CD, it comes up and the group, the support groups should be on the first page that you can click on. Um, but yeah, I never really struggled with POCD. And whenever it, I got triggered by it for the first time, I went to a support group. And even though I'm so familiar with it, I know what it's like, I know what it entails. Going to something and saying it out loud to people I don't know was so crazy. Mm. I went in and I'm like, so, I'm experiencing POCD, like, you know, and I was shocked at how many people and they were like, yeah, me too. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're not alone. There's so many others out there that are struggling too with what, what with what we're going through. So yeah. don't feel like you need to suffer in silence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You said it because I mean, suffering is suffering, but you know, if we can all come together and just provide a little bit of comfort, like that's sometimes that's enough, you know, it's just knowing that. So that's awesome, Cassie. I, I love that you did that because I'm, I'm sure that was scary. And you know, you, you had to take that step. Um, and it, that's the thing. It's even when you deal with other OCD themes, sometimes one comes in, something new comes in and it does throw you for a loop, even though, you know, you can handle it and you can take care of it if it's new, it's still scary. And you're still kind of like, oh gosh, you know, like, what do I do with this one? Or, or, you know, and so that can happen. And, and, you know, Cassie did, she like did a healthy step. She was like, I'm going to go to a support group and I'm going to talk about this in front of other people instead of kind of burying it deep and running away from it. Um, mm -hmm. 
So that's awesome, Cassie. Good for you. Um, I'm very happy that nobody <laughs> recognized me. I was like, I'm not going to say anything oh. about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so awesome, though. Um, and actually, this one kind of just seemed, you know, kind of involved with that. So, um, Constantino, so I'm really suffering right now with harm OCD and everything makes no sense. I feel so defeated. What can I do? Um, so just first off, like, I'm really sorry that this is happening to you. Um, I have harm OCD. It's my main theme. And I mean, it's scary. It's just so, so scary. Um, a lot, a lot of times people say themes don't matter. And like, I don't quite agree with that because I think sometimes when themes are of a certain content, it's just very different. And that's just my belief. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, it's very defeating. Now, what I would say is, you know, you're doing a great thing joining into this, like that's, that's something good, like getting involved in the community and seeing other people that are going through this. Um, that's, that's something really great. Now, what I would say though, is ERP therapy. So if you are able to see an OC specialist, Constantino, so that's going to be the most impactful for you is to work with a specialist who can direct you in exposure and response prevention. Um, because ERP is the most effective form of treatment. So that's just something that, um, you know, if you're able to, to kind of start looking into and we're not always ready, but it's about taking those, those small steps and you've taken this step here. So it's kind of just taking each step at a time, but I just want you to know, I mean, I struggled really hard with harm OCD and I was able to come out the other side very strong. So I, you know, I hope the same for you and, you know, wish you the best for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so everyone, we are just about a minute over. Um, I mean, there are so many great questions tonight, and I'm so sorry if we didn't get to some. I I think we might have gotten to everything though. Um, but you know, I, if, hope so. I hope so too. And if we didn't, um, you know, um, there will be more people on tomorrow night as well as Thursday night, right, Cassie? Yes, um, eight central. So you can always tune in and you know ask more questions there. Um, and then just like a, you know, just kind of want to give you guys just a brief, you know, little thing. Um, if you are interested in working with an OC specialist and also just learning more in general, it doesn't mean that you have to be ready to enroll into therapy or even to book that first appointment. But, you know, if you just want to at least book a call on our website um, for an OCD, so treatmyocd.com, that's step one. And I mean, to be honest, that was the hardest step for me. Like I just... Mm -hmm. I mean, I went to the website so many times last year, like, uh, you know, like, do I do this? Do I not? So like, you know, but okay, you don't have to get that you acquire and then maybe you're not ready and that's totally okay. Um, but, you know, kind of look into that and just know that you do have someone to talk to who has OCD before you go into that first appointment. So okay. if that's a fear of yours of just like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to expect. I don't know, you know, what to do. Well, you know, me and Cassie, we're peer advisors. And so when you do get signed up, you get matched with one of us. I mean, there's a few of us, but you get matched with one of us. And then we could have a conversation with you actually before your first appointment is really what we're there for to make sure that you're ready and that you're feeling good and know that you're, you are not alone. And we're kind of like wishing you off on this like great journey of just getting better. So that's just a little bit about us. Um, and me and Cassie are here kind of like every every other Tuesday um, here and there. We kind of like to switch things up with different people. But Cassie, any last words? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, sign up for therapy so you can have calls with me and Kyle because we will become your best friends and send you into therapy very happily yeah. um, because we were there too. Neither of us were like ready to start therapy and we kind of just threw ourselves no. into it. And it's, Gosh. you know, look where we are now. Don't give up on yourself. I know, I know exactly. Yeah, I like to always <laughs> say the queen of England can have OCD and still be who she is. So I really think that anyone can do whatever they want while overcoming OCD because we are strong. <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you everyone for joining in tonight. Um, I don't believe me and Cassie are back next week. So we're going to have some, some different people for you guys. Um, me and Cassie will be away, but thank you all so much. And, you know, please reach out to OCD if you have any questions. All right, guys, have a good night. Bye.